Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining us this evening. I hope everyone is doing well and keeping safe. On behalf of the APG Young Professionals, Trinidad and Tobago, I'd just like to welcome you to our talk this evening, the Mod Engineers Experience. This evening, we have with us Dominic Lord. Dominic is an independent drilling fluids contractor with six years of oil and gas experience. Dominic specializes in drilling fluids, but also has experience in well site supervision for drilling and production, working for both operator and contractor. Dominic is driven, results-oriented, professional who strives for quality. So I'll pass you over to Dominic now to share his screen and give us his insight for this evening. Hello, good day. Yes, we can hear you. Hey, everyone. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, today, I'll be doing a short presentation on the drill and fluids experience, for well, mud engineering experience. My name is Dominic Lord. Sorry. First, uh, what is mud engineering? Mud engineering, also known as drilling fluids engineering, is a specialized well site position for the testing of drilling slash completion fluids, also referred to as mud, and is prescribing drilling fluids treatment to maintain the program parameters. Uh, the daily activities. We have mud checks, which is the lab test that here perform, uh, monitoring of the pits, ensuring that mud, ensuring that mud treatment is being maintained, looking at the shakers, acquiring information from the Derek man, driller, company man, two pusher, preparing daily mud reports, tracking inventory, and attending toolbox slash free to our safety meeting. All right, with the mod checks, uh, basically we follow the API uh, RP to team B slash one to team B slash two procedures as the standard testing procedures for water base and all base drilling fluids. Uh, when I say monitoring the pits, it doesn't necessarily mean that you would stand by the pits for the entire day that once in a while, probably every couple hours, you go outside, you take a look around, you monitor the fluid level, ensuring the mud treatment is being maintained. Uh, same thing by performing the tests, then you could verify that your parameters are in check and also tracking of inventory. Uh, you would know that you have stuff being added. Looking at the shakers, Again, just like my time, but you won't be there whole day. Uh, you'll pass through once in a while. Check the cutting size. Check the type of cuttings that are coming across. You feel are the cuttings, which will give you an indication of how your mud is performing. Quiet information from the direct man, driller, company man, people shop. In your daily reports and for some of your calculations, you would require information from them, such as uh, strokes, any pump strokes per minute, uh, pump pressure, sample pressure, uh, the depth, and so on. And prepare any more reports that will just be uh, putting together the information from the test in the formats which the company well, the operator would desire. How do I become a mud engineer? There's no standard requirements to become a mud engineer. Uh, companies typically prefer graduates with bachelor's degree in science or engineering, but some accept graduates with college diplomas. But after you get into the field, one requirement in my service to attend mud school. Some companies do mud school in-house while others would send you to a drilling school for the mud school itself. 
functions of the drilling fluid, drilling mud. Fluid function to control formation pressure, to remove cuttings from the borehole, pull and lubricate the bit, to maintain wellbore stability, to seal permeable formations, to minimize formation damage, to transmit energy to the tools and bits, to ensure proper formation evaluation, and to reduce the risk to environment personal and drilling equipment. Types of mud. In drilling fluids, uh, we have two main types, water base and oil base. In water base, we have a drilling fluid, uh, which is a low solid fluid used to drill into the reservoir itself. Uh, we have the spur system. Uh, this is a system which can tolerate a lot of clays. Uh, we actually disperse the clays with any mud. Uh, non disperse system, we don't disperse the clays in the mud. Typically, we call it a low solids, non disperse system. Uh, on the oil base side, we have synthetic oil base. Uh, Can you hear me? Yeah, you broke up a little bit there, but I'm hearing you now again. And uh, synthetic, we have synthetic oil base, which means that uh, the oil phase of the mud will be a synthetic fluid. Uh, we have adverse emulsion. Uh, those are typically 5 to 50% water. And we have true oil base, which are typically five to ten percent water. Drilling fluid additives. We have viscosifiers, for example, bentonites, uh, xanthan gum. They provide viscosity. A bentonite also provides gel strength to the fluid. pH control. Uh, we have uh, plastic. Trail stabilizers, dispersants, deflocculants, inhibitors, thinners, fluid loss control, scavengers for oxygen and H2S, deformer, salt, loss circulation material, bridging agents, weighting agents, lubricants. Mud properties and tests and equipment. Uh, so we have it breakdown here at the density, viscosity, fluid loss, chemical composition, solid content, sand content, pH, uh, salinity, and MBT. First of density, uh, we use our mud balance to measure the density. All right, the density. Once you know the density, we can calculate the hydrostatic pressure. We need to control the formation, which is very important. Typically, uh, you take a density reading every half an hour to 15 minutes, depending on the rate of penetration and what you expect. Uh, next, we have funnel viscosity. Uh, this just gives us the viscosity of the fluid. Um, We have viscosity from the diameter. This is used to measure the flow characteristics with respect to forces applied to the drilling fluids. So the difference between this and the funnel viscosity is that the funnel viscosity will only give you a readings for one specific condition, while the diameter have multitude of conditions. Uh, the 600 reading, 300, 200, 100, 6, 3, and also you get a gel strength from the rheometer.
we have the fluid loss cell. Uh, this is used to measure the rate at which the drilling fluid uh, lose water to permeable formation. So while we're going through a uh, sand zone, over the reservoir section, we want to know how much fluid um, is entering into the formation itself. Based on that, we could know what to look for in the log, depending on the resistivity, if it's shallow, deep. Uh, chemical composition, uh, we have chloride ion content, alkalinity and lime, total hardness. All these tests are titration tests. Um, we follow the guidelines from the API 13B1 for water base fluids. Solid content uh, retort. Uh, this is used to measure the solid content of the drilling fluid. It also gives the water and oil content. Basically, this device uh, takes and own amount of drilling fluids and heats it up and separates the liquid from the solid. So in the end, you'll end up with the solid in the device and the liquids out. So when you collect the liquid in a measuring cylinder, you will actually see the separation between where the water and oil is. Well, if there's oil in the sample. So given the volume of water, then we can back calculate the actual solid content in the mud. Sand content. This kit just measures the sand content in the mud as a percentage. pH and salinity meter. Typically, we use this to maintain or measure the pH of the mud, especially for this first system where you need a higher pH for the mud to function properly. And in salt mud, where we need a specific concentration of salts to inhibit the swelling of the clays. Uh, MDT methylene blue test. Uh, this test is performed to measure the amount of reactive clays present in the drilling fluid. Here we have a sample of a typical drilling fluid report. Well, this is just a portion of it in the main parts. So to the left of the screen, uh, we have the time here for the time where they did the check. Uh, the measured depth, the TVD, the density of the mud, the funnel viscosity. Here we have from the rheometer, the 600 reading, 300, 200, 100, 63. The gel strength, 10 seconds gel, 10 minutes, 30 minutes. From the viscosities, we could calculate the uh, apparent viscosity, plastic viscosity, and yield points which are highlighted in red. Then we have the fluid loss. So from the cell, we we'll get, we'll get the reading, we we'll record it, and we'll also get something called a filter key, which is deposited on a piece of filter paper, which is placed in the cell. Now, the filter cake, we, we're looking for a thin, well, tight as possible filter cake. And it should also be flexible. If the filter cake is spongy and thick, that could indicate that we may have whole problems such as stick pipe. Then we have pH strip, slash meter, we call the pH alkalinity, PF, MF, uh, chlorides, methylene blue, sand content, as a percent, uh, oil content, water content. So from these readings, we can calculate uh, the low end value, low K value, high end value, high K value, low gravity solids, real solids, high gravity solids. Uh, 
coming across to the right, we have a whole geometry. This is where you'll get information from the driller, company man, tool pusher, casing, ID, ODs, and links. Then we have the survey information. You'll also get from them uh, form data with regards to liner size and stroke length from the direct man in order to calculate the pump output. And now that we have a whole enlargement factor because when we drill in, if we drill in a nine inch hole, the hole wouldn't be nine inch, it will be a little larger than that. So we have an enlargement factor of 15%. We have tank volume, which is the surface volume, circulating pressure, which you'll get from the direct man. The actual hole size, which would be the corrected, accounting for the 15% enlargement. String capacity, string displacements, casing annular volume, open hole volume, total volume, bottoms up, surface a bit. So all we are seeing in red is what we actually calculate from the information we gathered. Uh, it's important to know our bottoms up in case of anything happen. Um, ROP increase, uh, we know the bottoms up so we can check for what formation coming across. If it's sand, if it's clay. Um, total circulation time. Right, coming across to the right again, we have bit data. So all this information would be collected from the driller or tool pusher. And which is required for, to perform some calculations, like nozzle velocity, bit hydraulic horsepower, the jet impact force. Right. Under that, we have some more information for the flow line cleaners, also known as the shield shakers, which will just have the size of the screens and the runtime. Under that, we have solids removal equipment, Centrifuge, the sander, the filter, the weight of the inflow, weight of the outflow, so we can calculate the efficiency of the equipment itself and hours run. And I need that we have an next table, fluid accounting, which is especially important for oil based mods because we need to know how much volume we have at the end of the day. And we need to know where we lose volume, if we lose at all. Because of the environmental impact of the oil-based muds. Mud circulating equipment. We have pits, centrifugal pumps, mud pump, swivel, or top drive, pipe, shakers, mud cleaners, centrifuge. Vacuum degasser. So, this image here, you can see the mud tank or the pits. From here, the mud is transferred to the mud pump via a centrifugal pump. It is also referred to as a charge pump. The mud pump then pumps the mud up the sandpipe down the rotary hose to the top drive or server down the pipe. Then through the bits of the annulus and back over the shakers, where the shakers remove the solids from the mud. Uh, typically, we use uh, 170 API screens, uh, which should remove approximately particles the size of uh, 115 microns. Uh, the mud cleaner equipment. This actually moves the sand and silt from the mud. Uh, here to the top, you can see the cones. These two are for the sand and the ones in the back is silt. We run this to help keep the solids content of the mud down. It's important because uh, the bentonite, the, the module solids we have, the 
hayati viscosity hydral strength and you might be but in a nickel pants are centrifuge all right the centrifuges used to remove the smaller particles in the mud typically defines the clays uh, which are about four microns when we use the centrifuge we also lose the right and other additives to be put into the mud so we have something called a uh, decatting centrifuge uh, or bayrite recovery where we recover some of the bayrite or the beating agent which would be lost otherwise. What's it beating? The vacuum degasser. Right. This device is used to remove gas from the drilling fluids. Uh, say we drill in and we end up in a well controlled situation. We receive in gas cut mud. The mud that's coming up to the surface would have gas entrapped in it, which would give it a lighter density. So this is used to remove the gas from the mud. And the vessel is under vacuum. So when the fluid enters with the lower pressure, the gas will quickly diffuse from the mud into the void. HSC. Now first off we have GSA, job safety analysis. Uh, this document identifies the steps involved in completing a task or objective and identify all the hazards present. Recommendations are then made to reduce slash eliminate risks to personnel environment and equipment. All right, this is basically saying that we have a job to perform we will outline the steps in which we need to do to perform the job. Then highlight all the hazards present in the step. Make recommend and then recommendations to remove or eliminate the hazards. Uh, SDS, formerly known as MSDS material data sheets. The safety data sheets, this document conveys both physical and health hazards associated with chemicals. So all the chemicals we use, we must have a SDS for them. Be it from the stuff we use in the lab to even salt sodium chloride, which we might use in the well. We must have a SDS for it. Uh, this document will also highlight the precautions it would require in terms of handling the equipment, such as wearing respirator, gloves, etc. Then we have PPE, personal protective equipment. These devices are one to reduce slash minimize exposure to hazards. So typically someone who would be adding chemicals, they are required to wear chemical gloves, uh, respirator, face shield, uh, apron, right. to reduce the contact between the chemicals to their person. My experience. I started off in drilling fluids um, it was nice uh, at its ups and downs plenty difficult situations but along the way you learn a lot it grew um, i'm not going to say it's a easy job but have it bright sides um, i started off at Range resources. Uh, you hear me? You broke up there a little bit, but I can hear you now. I started off at 
marine resources, uh, marine drilling fluids uh, there. I was trained under uh, Canadian experts. Um, then I went on to oil services. Uh, only did uh, land jobs. And I went to Srinam on land. Uh, the experience was nice. Uh, there's a big difference drilling in Trinidad and Srinam. Basically, uh, the formations are plenty different. Trinidad, we have a lot more clay and sand. As in Srinam, we have a lot more sand and calcite. So in terms of mud monitoring and maintaining the properties, that are slight learning curve, but it's easy enough. Right, thank you. Any questions, comments, or remarks? Uh, all right. Thanks a lot, Dominic. So if you all have any questions, you could put it in the Q&A tab. Uh, but we had some questions that were pre-submitted. So I'll just read them out to you, Dominic, and you could answer them. Uh, sure. What are some of the challenges you face as a mod engineer? Uh, some of the challenges I face as a mod engineer was uh, yeah, not accustomed to the uh, to the work requirements because uh, sometimes uh, we might be in a well controlled situation, and you have certain things to do, reports to do, while managing the additions of the right or viscosifier or building new mud for the system. In terms of that, uh, the other challenges would be uh, when you now starting off. Remembering all the formulas and the functions of all the products. So after a little while doing it, you will start to pick up and get better eventually. Okay. Um, we have a, a question here. If you could just talk a little bit about the importance of 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 the mud in across when you're drilling across a P zone, like what you do differently. How, like, what's the importance of it when you drill in, in a piezo? Right, the importance of it is well, to control the formation and to reduce uh, skin damage, damage to the formation. So typically, when you drill in through a piezo, you will want to make sure that your fluid loss is as low as possible with a good filter cake. Uh, all your other properties are in check, your viscosities. So, a pretty well bore stability, uh, your salinity, if required in that situation, to match the formations, to reduce the likelihood of the swelling of clays. Uh, that's basically it. And as I said earlier, with the drilling fluid, most of the uh, offshore bigger operators, they use a drilling fluid when it comes time to drill into the reservoir, the pay zone. So, that fluid will be a fluid mostly uh, viscosified brine, typically. So that blue solid and plus in the formation, uh, the salinity will help inhibition of the clays. Uh, you hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you. Salinity will uh, help the inhibition of the clays and the really low solids. Sometimes we use our bridging agents in it to help stabilize the uh, well bore itself. Okay, so we had a lot of questions basically around, you know, the, the educational requirements and I think you touched on that and you spoke a lot about it. So. The other question we have here is how and how over time do you think the your job as a mod engineer has changed and how do you see it changing in the future with the current changes that we're seeing in the energy industry? 
over the time, uh, I, I see being uh, more aware of your responsibility because as a more engineer and hearing, ultimately, everything more or less in your hands, your feet, but the mother is the primary control uh, pretty well in terms of everything. Just being aware of that responsibility. Um, in terms of changes with the future, I don't really see it having such a decline in the, uh, I'll see. Uh, with within the demand for work itself because the petroleum, some people say the petroleum industry dying, but then I say where we get any material to make all the plastics, all the polymers, carbon fiber, all the new age stuff we use in our materials, most of it comes from the petroleum. So I don't see um, the demand dropping, but one thing I notice have dropped is uh, the pay has dropped since come significantly over the past probably 10, 15 years because of the uh, increasing amount of people uh, willing to do the job. Okay, okay, I hear you. And so the other question we have is, how much how much does the mud salinity affect the formation water salinity? Like, if you use a uh, KCL mud, how like what's the effect it will have on the formation water salinity? Alright, the effect on the formation water salinity wouldn't be that great, but we use the, we try and match the salinity at the formation so that we don't have swelling of the clays within the reservoir itself. So within the pay zone, we would have um, some clay or fines. And if we uh, introduce fresh water into a naturally saline environment, say 2300 ppm, sorry, 23,000 ppm, and we introduce drilling fluids with a salinity of 1,000 ppm, then the fines would place within the reservoir would start as well and to reduce the permeability of the near well bore reservoir. So that's why we try and match the reservoir salinity. Okay, and this is a two-part question. So the person said, thanks for the info informative presentation. And how how is it determined, the type of mud that needs to be used? So that's the first part. And then what is the best type of mud to use for LWD for transmitting the pulses? All right. The first type, uh, the best, how to determine what type of mud to use, right? Uh, yes. So first we look at uh, the formations we would um, expect to encounter, then we would be able to say um, what type of fluid we would want or what would be ideal in chemically matching the formations. Then after that, we would look at the course, how much the operator budgeted for the well or the fluid section. So most of the time you would have um, a juggle between what would work best and uh, the price. So like everybody say oil-based mud for everything, but then again, the price of oil-based mud is very high. So we have uh, the low solids, uh, non-dispersed polymer, well, KCL muds, uh, which are substituted for the uh, oil base sometimes in reactive clays that we expect to meet reactive clays. So as a cheaper alternative than the oil base. And the second question was um, it was which type of mod is best to use during LWD for transmitting pulses, the pulses. 
this type of what um I'll actually come back to you with, with that answer you now. Okay, sure, no problem. Sure, but, mm -hmm. but from my understanding of it, through the mud pulse uh, telemetry, um it it shouldn't shouldn't have a difference between oil base and water base. Okay. And l lastly, I guess we have two questions that are coming in, but uh, um, like based on from being a student to uh, a professional, like did you have any specialized uh, lab or testing experience? And if you could just talk a little bit more like a transition from being a student to, to your professional career now, like just expand a little bit on it. Right, from being a student to uh, now, I'm actually yes, still a student, but in terms of like specialized lab testing, I learned more or less on the job when I started. So, uh, what was the question again? Uh, yeah, yeah, if you had any specialized, any lab and specialized testing experience. Before I started to work or after? Pri yeah, prior to becoming an engineer. So, yeah, well, yeah. So we have to do pilot testing, which is our next part in selecting the mud system to, to use. So we, we do our pilot tests, um, put in our all the additives, uh, specific ratios, and check to see where our parameters should be uh, when we actually run in the system. So from that, uh, I'll learn some specialized tests. Okay, well, that seems to, to, to be the, the end of the questions that we had. Um, just, I put the contact information for us in the chat. You all can feel free to reach out to us if you have any further questions. Or, um, so I just like to thank everyone for turning out today. Dominic, thank you very much for that presentation. I think it was very informative and everyone enjoyed what they saw. And I mean, at a time like this, everyone kind of wants to know, you know, what are the experiences that you need and, and you made that a, a significant part of the presentation. So thank you for joining us this evening, everyone. And Dominic, again, thank you for your presentation this evening. Thanks for having me. Sure.